Welcome to Prayer with Peter Abridged. This week we pray the conclusion of our sorrowful mysteries. The fifth sorrowful mystery of the Most Holy Rosary is the crucifixion. Jesus uttered a loud cry, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And after he said this, he expired. Luke 23, 46, fruit of the mystery is perseverance and forgiveness of injuries. Jesus speaks from the cross seven times. The first thing he says, our Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. This is the ultimate so what behind Jesus' message. The very first thing that he says is forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. I've been going through a lot of different ideas with you all the past several weeks about human nature and about our goodness and where that comes from. And this is at the crux of it all. Those who hurt us, those who sin, don't know what they are doing. And if we responded to sin and to pain and suffering the way that Jesus did from the cross, conflict and strife in the world would cease. War would stop because we would understand that people don't do the wrong thing because they think they're doing the wrong thing. They crucified Christ because they were scared that he was going to overthrow the peace that they thought that they had. You know, they, they thought that they were preserving what they had because they were afraid. We sin because we are afraid, because we're running from something or running towards something, because we don't know what it is that we're looking for, because we're trying to fill the void in our hearts. We don't sin, guys, because we think we're doing the wrong thing. We sin because in that moment, the wrong thing appears to be right. And Jesus recognized this. Therefore, if we are to call ourselves Catholics, we must say with utter certainty, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. We must believe that in every moment when we look at and approach the souls of others and our own souls. If we can forgive others, we need to be able to forgive ourselves too in order to accept that God forgives us because forgiveness is the only path to heaven, which is why the fruit of this mystery is forgiveness of injuries along with perseverance. Um, it's made more pointed by the fact that, you know, Christ is saying this in his last moments. This isn't like when they arrest him and he's saying, Father, forgive them. And then they go and like beat him up to death and crucify him and kill him. And, and then he's like, well, I'm glad I, I, I got that out of the way because I don't know if I could have said it now. No, he waits till the last possible second to say, Father, forgive them. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. What does that say? It means that this forgiveness is not conditional. It's not conditional upon whether or not they're sorry. It's just conditional upon the fact that he wants to forgive them because he knows they don't know the severity of their actions. This is so, so important to what it means to be a Christian. There are no bad and good people. There are good people created good in the image of the good God. And those good people sometimes do the wrong thing because they think they're doing the right thing. And that's okay. God knows that. He made us that way. And he forgives us in spite of that. Because the other half of this is that Jesus wasn't just talking to the people who crucified him. He was talking to every single one of us too. Which is why when we go to confession, we confess our sins, and we hear the priest say, I absolve you of your sins. You've been forgiven. Go in peace. It's not the priest who's forgiving us. It's Christ from the cross in that moment. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How do we know he meant us? Because the next thing Jesus says is he turns to the thief on his right and he says, On this day, you will be with me in paradise. The sinner who was crucified with him, but who actually deserved to be crucified. Jesus says, On this day, today, now, not like some day in the future when um, all of your debt is paid off. On this day, because you chose to rely on my mercy, you will be with me in paradise. That tells us that God's mercy is greater than any of our sins and that our confessing it to Christ is what allows us to be freed from our sins because that's what he does. He offers contrition and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That tells us that there is mercy and hope 
in the cross, and that that's the message behind this mystery. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How do we forgive others? Just as we discussed last week, Jesus gives us a very, very powerful weapon against sin and against selfishness, and that weapon is his mother. He says, woman, behold your son. And then he doesn't say, John, behold your mother. He simply says, behold your mother, which means he's not just talking to John. Because first he he says, woman, behold your son which means like he's setting it up so that he would then address his best friend, but he's clearly not just addressing his best friend. We know that Jesus wasn't just fatigued and tired. When you're being crucified, you're being crushed under the weight of your own body, and you drown in the fluid that builds up in your lungs, which means in order to breathe, you have to push up on the nails that hold you up just to breathe, and it causes excruciating pain. Therefore, every word that he says, he's literally saying with his actions, I would rather die than for you not to be able to hear me say this. These words are more important than my own life. That's how we know how important these seven last words of Christ are. There's nothing insignificant about any little thing that he says, and we know we can be very picky about this wording. He wants us to take Mary to be our own mother. He wants that more than anything, and she is his last gift to us on the cross. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This next statement from Jesus may seem confusing, but really the message is quite simple, guys. Jesus is human, 100% human, just as he is 100% divine. And it's okay. It's okay to be human. That's what he's saying here. When you're suffering upon your cross in your life, it's okay to turn to God the Father and say, God, why have you abandoned me? And to let him show you otherwise. It's okay to reach out to God and ask him to be there for you. Jesus was human too. And and he said this so that we would understand that he felt every bit of pain and that these seven last words weren't just lessons to us. You know, it was out of his own humanity too. Like it's so perfectly intertwined together, his humanity and his desire to teach us and to be our, our model and our guide and our salvation It's also perfectly intertwined. And like, we would not have this great glorious redeemer if we were not imperfect humans who could choose not to follow God. So understand that like, this is why we're given the message of forgiveness and why it's the center crux of everything in our faith. We are meant to be imperfect so that we can choose to let God make us perfect. That's what Jesus is saying here. Under, all of, uh, under that simple statement that at first may seem like just really downright confusing, it's okay that we're not perfect. God wanted it this way so that we could learn to rely on him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. These last three words that he speaks are the most important words ever spoken in human history. He says, I thirst. Then he says, it is finished. And then he says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Now, in the, the Jewish rite of Passover... There are four cups that are drank from during the Passover, and the most important of these cups is the blessing cup. At the Last Supper, Jesus skipped over this cup because 
that cup he drank himself on Calvary when he made himself into the Paschal sacrifice. He made himself the spotless, unblemished lamb and put himself on, the, on that altar of the cross to be offered up to God. If you read through the, um, the first five books of the Bible, uh, if you read through Leviticus, you'll see that there are prescribed rituals for different types of sacrifice and for atonement of our sins. And it has to be done in a very specific way. And that was God's um, means by which to allow us to ask for forgiveness in a very concrete way that actually meant something to us. And Jesus fulfills all of this in the way that he dies on the cross. And that's why, you know, I asked a Protestant friend of mine once, what did Jesus mean when he, when he said, it is finished? And he said, uh, sin and death. And I said, well, you're not incorrect. However, that's not directly what he was referring to. Jesus was referring to the meal of the Passover. It is finished. Because with him, the Passover had been concluded. And then he proves this by saying, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he's saying, this altar is the offering to God the Father. And that is what this sacrifice is for. He's showing us the purpose. And it is here we see, finally, that this whole ordeal was so much greater than it looked on the surface. That he died for you so that we could be forgiven and could learn to forgive others in a way that actually meant something. And could eventually be relieved of our human condition and join him and hand over our spirit to the Father as well, as he does. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of your mercy. And guys, I want to point out the importance of those words one more time. Especially those who are in most need your mercy. That means there is not a one single person among us that is without exception in need of God's mercy and that we are called to forgive everyone the way that Christ forgives us. God bless you all.